All right, here we go. It's a brand new Flyers Daily for the 4th of February, 2024. Flyers Daily, as always, presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Now, just two days till the Flyers return. They'll be in Florida tomorrow uh, for a practice in advance of their first game back from the All-Star break, coming up on Tuesday night against the Florida Panthers. Florida, a good team, a stretch of some uh, pretty good games and very important games For the Flyers coming up, Florida tomorrow night. Where do Florida sit in the standings? They, of course, are in the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. Got to the Cup Final a year ago. They're in the second spot right now. 49 games played, 31-14-4, and 66 points. They've won their last four, plus 31 in goal differential, 6-2-2 in their last 10. Flyers, 50 games played, 25-19-6, and 56 points, 5-5 in their last 10. And they're riding that five-game skid. Uh, into and we'll be writing it into tomorrow night's uh, game or rather Tuesday night's game against the Florida Panthers. Then the Flyers will return home for three Winnipeg, Seattle and Arizona, then go to Toronto, have the stadium series game in New Jersey coming up on the 17th that Saturday evening at 8 p.m. Uh, then the Flyers will also be at Chicago. Then they'll come home for a game against the Rangers, go to Pittsburgh and back home again for a game to wrap up the month against uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, who we saw. Uh, during this five-game skid as well. Uh, So the Flyers will be back on Tuesday, starting to get a little itchy, starting to get a little excited for this push to the playoffs. And we talked about that quite a bit yesterday. If maybe you checked out during this week and you missed uh, some of the Flyers Daily episodes, we had some really good content over the calendar week. Monday and Tuesday was a special two-part Ask Billy with Bill Meltzer, uh, two uh, episodes where we tackled a lot of the Flyers fan questions on Twitter and social media and got to some really interesting topics, including the Tippett extension, the Ryan Paling extension, goaltending, you name it. Across the board, we got to it in those two episodes on Monday and Tuesday. Brian Boucher uh, joined us on Wednesday and uh, had a great conversation with Bouch. Owen Tippett of that new eight-year contract, which will kick in after this season on Thursday. And Friday, we had Jamie Drysdale uh, drop by for his first uh, extended conversation on Flyers Daily. And yesterday, if you missed it, the all-star Travis Konechny, who picked up an assist for Team McKinnon, uh, although they lost that game in the shootout 4-3. to three. TK with his second all-star appearance. And, of course, he is leading the Philadelphia Flyers in points. TK having a real good year once again. Last year missed 22 games with two different upper body injuries, the wrist. And I'm not sure what the other one was off the top of my head. Uh, but so far this season... Konechny's been the MVP. He's got 42 points, 22 goals, 20 assists. He's got five shorthanded goals, two power play goals, two power play assists. And uh, he's been the Flyers' most consistent and best player. And the player that other teams probably fear the most when he jumps on the ice, maybe with the exception of Owen Tippett, they're kind of in that same category where they can develop offense on their own and really at the drop of a dime. Uh, things can not be going right on a shift. And then all of a sudden uh, a player like Owen Tippett or a player like Travis Konechny can just make a a dazzling play and uh, give you a great scoring chance and give you a great goal as well. But in this episode, what I wanted to tackle is something that we tackled uh, preseason that we've talked about. I, I talk about the knowns and the unknowns of a season and things that I feel like I know with relative certainty And the relative certainty comes from what we've seen this year, what we've seen from the player, what we see from the way the player carries themselves as a pro, and what we see as very likely to happen. That's the known with relative certainty category. And then I have the unknown category. Unknown, I'm just not sure. It could go several different ways on these different topics. And for those watching on YouTube, I kind of wrote everything out. I'll go old school and I wrote everything out here in my trusty little uh, notebook. And I've got some things that I feel like I really have a good handle on and that I know of varying degrees of importance. And then the unknowns are the things that could ultimately make the biggest unknown. Are they going to make the playoffs uh, that could kind of lock it in one direction or another? So we're going to kind of go with the things that I feel like I know with relative certainty. And and again, like always on everything on this podcast, 
I let if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love to get your comments below on your knowns with relative certainty and your unknowns for this final 32 games. We have a 50 game sample size to kind of look at some of these things. So we should have a longer list of knowns than we do unknowns. Uh, but I'd love to get your examples of those as well. Put them in the comments section below. Or if you're listening via regular podcasting, um, you can always email me, jason.mertitus, J-A-S-O-N dot M-Y-R-T-E-T-U-S at gmail.com. And you can also uh, tweet me at Jason Mert, uh, DM me there as well. And uh, I'd love to get to some of those and find out what, what all you guys are thinking as your knowns with relative certainty and your unknowns going forward and how that will implicate and uh, kind of determine whether this team makes the playoffs or doesn't make the playoffs. So let's start with the knowns. Again, these are with relative certainty. And I'm going to start with the guy that was an all-star, two-time all-star now. He was an all-star in the 1920 season. Uh, he had 24 goals that year in 66 games. Uh, and Travis Konechny, I feel like I know with relative certainty that Travis Konechny, even though he's gone three games without a point leading into the break, but he's going to still deliver a very consistent and high level of play and if you were to just take this final 32 games and not even consider the first 50 games, he'll be the MVP of the team based on just this 32 games. I think he's going to be the one that leads the way. I think some guys could challenge him, and I hope they do. A guy like Owen Tippett, maybe Morgan Frost can jump into that category um, and challenge him. Sam Harrison is going to get a huge opportunity uh, to maybe be the MVP of these final 32 games. We'll see. Uh, but I feel like I know with relative certainty that Travis Konechny's high level of play is going to continue through this season. Now, the one thing I really don't deal with is, is this player going to stay? What if Konechny gets hurt? Well, I, that's always part of the equation, uh, but it's not something we can project um, like other elements of traits of play or uh, the way a player is playing. Uh, so that's number one. Number two. Um this is a known, but it's not necessarily a positive. I feel like I know with relative certainty that Tyson Forster needs to become more selfish as a player. And that may sound really counterintuitive. And I get why. The, the word selfish is a, is a word that is deemed negative. But in this case, I don't deem it as negative. Tyson Forster, I think, needs to become more selfish in shooting the puck. I want to see Tyson Forster use the weapon that he was drafted in the first round as the hallmark a lot more. We've seen the shot a few times. We need to see it more. Sometimes when a young player comes into the NHL, they have this respect of deference. They defer, and they always want to set somebody up instead of being the young guy that's just ripping. I want to see Tyson Forster rip the puck. I know he needs to shoot more. If he does, he'll score more. Yeah, I say go to the dirty areas, go to the front of the net. That's where you want to score goals. That's where goals are scored. He doesn't have to go there to score. He needs to use that shot more. And I know with relative certainty, he needs to be a little bit more selfish and let it rip. Let it rip. That's what I want to see more of from, from Tyson Forster. Will he? Will he do that? I don't know. That's an unknown. But I know that he needs to do that. That's my opinion. Uh, with relative certainty, a known for me is that Owen Tippett, provided he comes back and is healthy, he's going to be a difference maker. I think we're just, I think we're scratching the surface with Owen Tippett in a lot of ways. I think we're just seeing a player absolutely come into his own once again. I think we saw it last year. I didn't love the start that he got off to this year, but then once he got his legs under him and his game going and look, scores are going to be streaky. Uh, I think that he's going to be a difference maker. He's one of those guys. We saw it when he went out of the lineup that can generate offense on his own. And they need guys like that. They lack that. Owen Tippett will be a difference maker. I know that with relative certainty. Um, speaking of scratching the surface, I know with relative certainty that we're just scratching the surface with Joel Farabee. That year that he had in 22-23 was a huge byproduct of having a midsummer surgery on his neck. And he was way beyond behind the eight ball from the minute camp started. 
he lost all the muscle and fitness and training that he did prior to that and then had to recover from the surgery. But I think we're seeing the Joel Farabee that we hoped we would see in a linear path. It wasn't a linear path. There was a there was an injury that derailed that and, and a surgery that derailed that. Joel Farabee this year in 50, by the way, he played all 82 last year, but this year in 50 games, he's got 17 goals, 23 assists, 40 points for the Flyers. Uh, he's playing over 16 minutes of ice time, and he's been a huge catalyst. I think he's going to end up being a penalty killer for this team at some point, but he's been straight up a stud at five on five. One of the top five on five players in the NHL, as a matter of fact. I think we're just scratching the surface with Joel Faraby. I think it's only going to get better. I really do. I don't think he's fully grown into his body yet. I think he's got more muscle to add. I think he's got more finish to add to his game. And he's a gamer. So I think we're scratching the surface with Joel Faraby. That's a known. Um, my next known with relative certainty, I think that Sean Walker will be dealt at the deadline. Just It's a numbers game. It, one of my unknowns, I'll just tip it right now, is whether Jamie Drysdale can stay healthy because he's missed so much time over the past two years. If he can, then it's a numbers game. Sean Walker will be dealt. What will he be dealt for? Will it be a first-round pick? Will it be a second-round conditional, first conditional? I don't know. Um, that's going to depend how many teams get into the mix. And they can. Danny Breer can kind of put teams up against each other based on need, and that'll determine the return. Uh, but if Jamie Drysdale, one of those unknowns, can stay healthy and remain available, which I say is always the best ability, is the ability to stay available. Availability is the best ability. Then Sean Walker will be dealt. And he fits here, you know, from a, a style of play standpoint and a cultural standpoint. Uh, but when the acquisition happened for Jamie Drysdale in the Cutter Gauthier trade, um, that changed a lot of things. It certainly changed a lot of things. Uh, so I think that's a known with relative certainty. I don't like to project on players being moved, uh, but that one's just a sheer numbers game. Um, I think that with relative certainty, we'll see at least one more D that hasn't played a game yet for the Flyers suit up for the Flyers. They have suit up, suited up 11 different defensemen on the NHL roster. And if you would have told me that before the season, I'd have said, that's a disaster. No team can go 11 deep on their blue line and expect to be winning. It's just, that's just an absurd number. Maybe eight deep, maybe nine. 11 is crazy. The Flyers have played 11 D from Travis Sanheim playing 49 games, Sean Walker are playing all 50, Cam York playing all 50, Igor Zamula playing 40. Uh, Nick Sealer playing all 50, Louis Belpedio getting a dozen, Rasmus Ristolainen playing 29 games, Jamie Drysdale's now played eight games, Mark Stahl, Emil Andre, and Victor Mente even played a game. I think we'll see either Ronnie Adderd or Adam Yinning, and that'll make it an even dozen different defensemen that the Flyers will have dressed and played this season. That's a stunning number. That's a good problem. That's... That's a good number, the fact that you can put that many in, and the team is sitting in the third spot in the Metropolitan Division of the Eastern Conference. Um, another thing I feel like I know with relative certainty is that the Flyers will not name a captain this year. I know some people still going, oh, they should name a captain. They I don't think that's going to happen this year. I don't even know if the captain is here. The eventual next captain is here yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see on that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. We've talked about that before. Um, is this team suffering because there's not a C on somebody's jersey? I don't think so. Um, which brings me to my next known with relative certainty is that the level of accountability, no matter who you are, um, will not wane. The accountability will be sustained. Whether that's Travis Konechny, if he has a period of time where he's not doing the right things, he'll be sat down for stretches in games or a period. I mean, the Flyers' top two point producing players have each had periods where they were were benched. Konechny had that end of the second period into the third period against Pittsburgh. Joel Farabee played what 57 seconds in one game and then worked the door the rest of the game. And when Torch was asked about it that post game, he said, why didn't why did Farabee get benched? He said, because he didn't listen. How did Joel Farabee react to that? Accountability 
is going to sustain for this Flyers team. That will not wane. That is a non-negotiable for John Tortorella and this coaching staff. And I know that the GM, the president, Danny Briere and Keith Jones, they believe in that level of accountability as well. That is across the board. And it's not just for the hockey players. It's for everybody associated with the organization. So that's my list of flyers, knowns with relative certainty. Now the unknowns. And these are things I'm not, I have some questions on for a variety of different reasons. Like we talked about Drysdale's health. He hasn't played a ton in the last two seasons. He's had some availability issues. So that is a valid concern with 32 games left. Is he going to play all 32 of those games? If he does, I think that's great. That'd be fantastic for the Flyers. They need that. And there's in this tight playoff push, but will he is an unknown. I cannot say that with relative certainty that he is going to based on, you know, recent uh, data that he's going to be available. Need to see that first. Some things need to be proven. Let's go kind of in the same vein, but we're, we're not going to do it to availability. We're going to do it to sustainability when it comes to Sean Couturier and to some extent, Cam Atkinson. Now Couturier had some, some nagging injuries, missed a couple of games. He's missed four total this season. He's played 46. He's got 31 points, 10 goals, 21 assists. He's playing just under 20 minutes a night at 1957. He's got three power play goals, three power play assists. Um, he's been so far ahead of where I thought he would be after missing 21 months, but is it sustainable through 82 games playing almost 20 minutes a night after you miss that 21 months? That's a question mark. It's an unknown. I don't know. We've never gone down this path before. So is his availability and his level of play sustainable? That's a, an unknown for me at this point. I don't know. Cam Atkinson got off to a really good start to the season, had a 26-game goal drought, longest of his NHL career, has come back, and I think he's got six goals in his last five or six games. He's been great of late. Is his sustainability in the way he's playing now going to be there? I'm not saying he's got to score at that clip because that's unfair. That's an unfair kind of metric to hold him to, uh, but that's an unknown also for me. Now, another unknown, and this unknown – is one that's very difficult to overcome. It's goaltending. Because, you know, you look at this season and the Flyers and what they've gotten from their goaltenders has been a revelation. But obviously, things have changed considerably in this regard. Sam Harrison, first three games of the year, were not good for him. And he's a guy that, figured out a way to deal with being the, the backup at the time and find a way to turn in quality start after quality start. Had a fantastic run from from his fourth game of the year up until, uh, let's see, let's go into his 20th game of the year. Sam Erson had unbelievable, an unbelievable run. Great numbers. You look at that stretch, 17 games, a record of 12-3-2, 31 goals allowed in those 17 games, under two, which is 187 goals against average, and a 930 save percentage. But since then, in his last, what, five games, and, and again, I don't pin this all on the goalie. This is a lot of circumstance around him as well. He's been, in his last five games played, he's got a record of 0-4-0. One of those, obviously, the Colorado game, he came in in relief and played a period. Uh, but in those four and a, games in a period, he's allowed 16 goals and has an 826 save percentage. Can Sam Erson handle you know, being the number one guy with 32 games left? Can he excel in that role? Because we know how important goaltending is. is. Is the backup for the remainder of the season Cal Peterson? Is it Felix Sandstrom? We'll see. You know, is, is it another guy? Uh, do you go on the market for goaltending? I don't think you go on the market and trade anything for it. Uh, the, the backup goaltender in Colorado was waived yesterday. 
do you go out and grab a guy like that? He is not having a good season. There's a reason why he got waived. He's in the final year of his contract. But I don't know that you go out there and you look at Provestov, Ivan Provestov from the Colorado Avalanche, and go, is that an improvement over Cal Peterson or Felix Sandstrom? You're not committing to him long term. It's his salary seven hundred seventy five thousand. Unless Kim Dillaball and the scouts see something that they can remedy in his game, then you probably don't do that either. But we'll see where the Flyers go in that goaltending is going to be a huge storyline in this final thirty two games. Huge storyline. It's always a big storyline. Um, let's go to Travis Sanheim. You know, Travis Sanheim has had a remarkable year. The way he started the year. Just piling up points, playing tons of minutes, all of it. But is he going to be able to refine after this break? And he needed the break. I, I think everybody did, but him in particular, with the amount of minutes played in the beginning of the year, really through the first thirty so some odd games, is he going to refine that early form of point production? Now he's only got four goals in the year, but he's got twenty three assists. He is a guy that's averaged twenty four minutes and nine seconds of ice time. It's a lot of ice. You still want to get that down even below that. Um, so will Sanheim find his form in point production and driving offense in transition, joining the rush, all of those things. Um, Morgan Frost is another one. Morgan Frost has been scratched, what, uh, 11 times this season. He's played 39 games. He's got seven goals, 15 assists, and 22 points in that time. Is he going to, A, stay in the lineup, and is he going to produce? He produced in the second half of last year. He led the team. Can he do that again this year? If he can, that that's going to be a huge boost for the team. The most creative offensive playmaker they have. There's no question about that. Tons of skill there. Uh, but is Frost going to liken that production that he had last year in the second half this year? Big question. Um, the next one is Noah Cates. He was one of the big, big storylines out of last year. No Sean Couturier. Cates moves to the middle. Was a, a Selkie finalist worthy candidate in basically his rookie year. And we know there's more offense there. We knew why it wasn't there last year because of the defensive responsibilities he's had. This year has been one that, to this point, he would likely like to forget. He's only played in 28 games. And he's got one goal and four assists for five points. He had the, uh, I think, double break in his ankle or his foot, whatever that injury was, just got back. What is Noah Cates going to be down the stretch? That's a huge question. They could really take a few minutes off of Sean Couturier and land them to Noah Cates, and that would help Couturier, and maybe it would help Cates as well. But Cates has got to play well. And we'll see how Noah Cates finishes this season. If he's going to make it a total season that he'd like to forget, or if he's going to kind of salvage it with this final 32 games, obviously unlucky with the injury that he has sustained. Um, but that's a big question mark going forward. And then really kind of the last one, well, second to the last one, penultimate, as they like to say in formula one parlance, what is the trade deadline going to be? Who's here? Who's not? Who's getting traded? We talked about Sean Walker. Are there other players that are getting moved? Do they extend Nick Sealer or he's in the final year of a deal? Does he get moved? Do you look at a guy like Rasmus Ristolainen's name has been out there? Does he get moved? Mark Stahl is obviously of less critical you know, essence at this point. He's only played 17 games. But who gets dealt at the deadline? That's a big question. That's a really, that's a whopper of a question. Who goes? What comes back? Is it just assets that come back? And if if somebody gets moved and it's just assets that return, whether it's draft capital, prospects, whatever, the, who gets called up? Does Bobby Brink return? There's, there's a huge trickle-down effect to all of it, which is why we're talking about it. So that's a big unknown. And then probably the biggest unknown of everything, and really the reason for this is the playoffs. Talked about it yesterday. Flyers are about a 52.6% chance to make the playoffs. Basically a coin flip. Will they make the playoffs? It's the biggest unknown. They're sitting in playoff position now. 
But with some of those unknowns we just listed, th- th- some of those unknowns are going to have to be become knowns, but in a very positive way to finish the job that they've put themselves in position for through the first 50 games of the year. So again, I'd love to get your feedback on those knowns with relative certainty and some of the unknowns that remain. And coming up tomorrow, we will talk to Bill Meltzer. He'll join us for his regular Monday edition and hockey week will be back upon us as the Flyers will get back in action coming up on Tuesday against the Florida Panthers. Everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow coming up on a brand new Flyers Daily.